Welcome to the Madison Motor Podcast special edition series where I preview and predict each team's season for Major League Baseball. This will be the 10th of 30, so we're going to be a quarter, or I'm sorry, a third way through after the show. And this will be the Detroit Tigers who um, are getting some sleeper buzz as they do each and every year. But we mostly know how that turns out most of the time. So we'll do the top 30 prospects. We will um, do superlatives. We will do the team ceiling and floor. Um, and then um, futures for like teams and player or the team and players on the and then bull prediction at the end. So again, this is going to be the Detroit Tigers. All right, so to the prospects. Their top prospect is Max Clark. He's an outfielder, expected to be up by 2026. He is 13th overall on MLB.com. Two, Colt Keith, infielder, expected to be on the team this year. He is 22nd overall on MLB.com. Three, Jackson Joby, righty, 2025, expected to be... Um, up to 2025, and then uh, he's 25th on MLB.com. Four, Jace Jung, um, infielder, plays second and third, ETA 2024. And he is the brother of Rangers third baseman Josh Jung. And Jace Jung is 60 on MLB.com. Five, Ty Madden, righty, ZTA is 2024. Um, six, Parker Meadows, outfield, 2024. Seven, Kevin McGongle, um, middle infield, 2027. Eight, Justin Henry Malloy, outfield, third base, 2024, ETA. Nine, Keter Montero, righty, 2024. 10, Wilmer Flores, funny name, um, righty, 2024. 11, Sawyer Gibson Long, righty, 2024. 12, Troy Melton, righty, 2025. 13, Justice Bigby, outfield, 2024. 14, Dylan Dingler, catcher, 2024. 15, Hale U. Lee, second base, 2025. 16, Brant Herter, lefty, 2024. 17, Paul Wilson, lefty, 2027. 18, Max Anderson, second base, 2026. 19, um, Jose um, Briseño, catcher, first base, 2027. 20, Enrique Jimenez, catcher, 2028. 21, Wencio Perez, outfield, second base, 2024. 22, Eddie's Leonard, Shortstop outfield, 2024. 23, Carson Rucker, left infielder, 2027. 24, Dylan Smith, righty, 2025. 25, Roberto Campos, outfield, 2025. 26, Peyton Graham, shortstop, 2026. 27, 27, Christian Santana, infield, 2026. 28, Tyler Madison, righty, 2024. 29, Blake Dickerson, Lefty, 2027, and 30, Isaac Pacheco. That's another funny name. Left infielder, 2025. All right, so best rookie on the Tigers. I'm going to say this is a good one. You could argue Colt Keith, and you could argue Jace Jung. Um, so I think... That the more likely candidate will be Colt Keith. Because Jay, I think Jay Stone has more upside, but he's starting in double A. But I'm going to say Colt Keith. And he'll come in and play either second or third. Um, I had him playing second to start the year. So um, I'm going to say that he improves on my number 30 ranking. I mean, that's what happens when you're a rookie. You're supposed to be at the bottom of the list because you're unproven. So, um, I think Cole Keith would be their best ruck. Um, most improved player on the Tigers. Um, this is a good one. Um, 
because obviously um, Spencer Torkelson last year um, really put up good numbers. But it took him a while to get going. But there's an obvious guy sitting there for most improved on the Tigers, and that's Riley Green. Um, he'll stay healthy, and I think that he will produce a full season to the point where people are going to realize he's um, a keeper. Um, most disappointing. Um, this obviously go is going to go to one of the pitchers, and I'm going to say it's Jack Flaherty. Um, he um, really wasn't good with the Orioles after the trade. And he hasn't had an ERA under four since 2021. And his ERA has been over four um, three of the last four seasons. So that's an obvious disappointment pick. Um, make or break player on the Tigers. Um, Shelby Miller. He's somebody that's bounced around the league for a while. Um, we saw him pitch with the Dodgers last year. It was really good, but that's what earned him the Tigers deal. But he was so bad up until the Dodgers last year. But, like, how is he without the Dodgers um, around him? So that's why I feel he's a make or break. Um, all right, bounce back. Um, to me, it's obvious, and I'm going to say it's Casey Mize coming off the injury. Um... I mean, you could argue even him for make or break, but I like Casey Mize more than most. He was really good in 21. He didn't pitch last year. The year before two starts in, he gets hurt. And I think he's going to pitch more like, if not better than he was in 2021. So to me, Casey Mize is the bounce back, comeback guy. Um, Ewing Theory. Um, There's no... um. Ewing theory for um, the Tigers. Nobody. Oh, there is a Ewing theory guy on the Tigers. Um, K Rod. Eduardo Rodriguez. He got he signed with the Diamondbacks as a free agent. So um, there's a, a a Ewing theory guy that I just thought about. So maybe the Tigers are better without him. I mean, D backs are worse. Who knows? But um. So, yeah, that's an obvious um, Ewing Theory candidate right there. Um, so, team ceiling floor. I think their ceiling is second. I think there's a scenario to finish ahead of the Guardians or the Twins, depending on um, some stuff. Um, like, if Mice comes back and is awesome, Flaherty pitches the way he did with his, the, with his first couple Cardinals years. Maeda lives up to the hype. Scooball continues to develop. Bullpen guys step up. Torkelson puts up guardian numbers again. Colt Keats is a rookie impact guy. Javier Baez is better. Um, and Kerry Carpenter continues to play well. So there is a second place ceiling for the Detroit Tigers, but there's a fourth place um floor. I almost want to say last place floor, but um, that would be, um, not hard to fathom, but, um, I think, um, another team in the division is more likely to finish last than them, but I think their floor is fourth. And if things go wrong and, um, Mize isn't as good coming off the injury, bullpen falls apart, Torkelson isn't as good, doesn't repeat last year's second half. Javier Baez continues to be bad. Mark Hanna's no good. So there's a scenario for them to finish in fourth. Um, all right, so some future for the Tigers. Um, so um, World Series, probably 80 to 1, 70 to 1. Um, which is absurd. So the American League's probably thirty-five to one for them, thirty-two to one. 
the ALCS is probably 15 to 1. 10 to 1. That's absurd. Same number as the Guardians. Give me a break. The Guardians are way more likely to reach the uh, ALCS. So that's what makes the Guardians more valuable at that number. Um, the Tigers have a cheapy number to win their division, too. Plus 380. That's that's ridiculous. That should be more like 5 to 1 than plus 380. Um, where's Torkelson for AL MVP in case the Tigers are a surprise in the AL this year? Um, I'm seeing Vinny Pascatino on the Royals on here. That's just funny. Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson are each 200 to 1. I saw Jackson Holiday for that number, too. Um, AL Cy Young. I want to see um, Maeda's number and um, Scooball. Scooball's 10 to 1, which is absurd. Um, Maeda is 150 to 1. Um, I want to see for Rookie of the Year, Holt Keith. He is 10 to 1, and Parker Meadows is 25. And I don't think Jung's on here, though. No, he's not. Um, AJ Hinch is probably up there for manager of the year. Yeah, he's the favorite at plus five fifty, which is absurd. I the Tigers get overhyped every single year, for sure. And then, what's Baez for comeback player of the year? He has to be on there. He's not, but Casey Mises is thirty five to one. That makes some sense. He turns into. An ace in that rotation. And then their closer for um, reliever of the year, Alex Lang, 35 to 1. On which is interesting. All right, win total. I'm, oh my God. 80 and a half. You're pretty much betting on them to. If you bet the over, you're betting on them to finish 500 or better. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. And what are they for the playoffs? Plus 172. And the Guardians are plus 176. Makes sense to that, FanDuel. Um, so, league leaders. Um, I want to see Torkelson home runs. 65 the 1. And what about Riley Green? Um, I don't see Riley Green on here, but I want to see Torkelson Sumber. And what about um Scooball for strikeouts? He's not on here, is he? 32 to 1. So that is another interesting number. And in stolen bases, I want to see if any guys on the Tigers are on this list. Which would be interesting. No, I don't see a Tiger on the list. Um, What about the closer for the leader in saves? Alex Lang, 65-1. Yenier Cano is 50-1 for the O's. Which is a fun one. And then Diaz on the Reds is 20. That's something I want to bring up. Um, so my favorite future for the Tigers. Um, 80, under 80 and a half wins. Um, I know they're saying, oh, the division's so bad. And maybe they think the Guardians. But my take is I just think the Guardians are more talented than the Tigers. And the Tigers get overhyped each and every year. And I need to see them do it. So I think under 80 and a half is an auto bet, and I would even bet it. I, um, I could see them probably like mid seventies for win. So I think eighty and a half is too high for the Tigers. So that's my favorite future for them. All right, bold prediction for the Tigers of Detroit. Um, I think that um Spencer Torkelson. Will um, be up there for home runs. And I think he will 
have the most home runs among American League first basemen. So how about that? He leads AL first baseman in home runs. Spencer Torkel. So that's my bold prediction for the Tigers. And there you have it for the Tigers. And next up is a fun one. The Houston Astros.